We've got something a little bit different today. A friend of mine's just bought a new leather sofa. Well, it was new to them, but it was actually second-hand. But it was in really good condition. Until it was delivered and it got this fairly sizeable tear in one of the arms as it was pushed through the front door. I've done leather repairs in the past and I usually stick a patch of leather behind the tear and stick it all together with something like Evo Stick. Or more recently I've been using this Bostic leather repair glue which works really well. But for this repair, as it's going to be fairly visible, I'm going to use a leather filler to hide any join lines, or at least disguise them as much as possible. So I've got this Coconix leather repair kit, which comes complete with the filler, which also acts as the adhesive, some backing material to strengthen the repair, a little mixing tub for mixing your colours, a spatula, and so on. I'll put links in the description to any of the stuff that I use, in case you want to check it out yourself. I've already done a test repair on an off-cutter leather and I'm really pleased with how it came out. Albeit that's a somewhat easier job because it's just a flat sheet of leather. But if it comes out anything like as well as that on the sofa I'll be really pleased. So firstly I've cut a bit of backing material to insert behind the repair to support it. Um, but actually before I insert that I need to trim off any loose fibres on the edge of the leather because you don't want those getting in the way of the repair. They don't want to come to the surface because um, that will ruin how it looks. I'll edit a few bits out of this video so you don't have to watch the whole process um, but you get the idea of what I'm doing here. I'm just trimming off these fibres around the edge so they're not in the way of the actual join line. Right, time to insert the patch. And I'm going to have to be fairly careful because it's really close to the seam here and that's actually stitched so I can't insert behind the seam. Um, so I'll probably glue the bit at the bottom here first to make sure that's well tethered before I then come on to the rest of the um, repair. So let's see if we can work this um, backing material under the area we're repairing. This might take a little while. I'll just stuff it in initially and then get it all smoothed out. Again I might edit a little bit out of this because you don't really need to see me struggling for 10 minutes to get this all in place. Right that's more or less there. Uh, so the next thing to do is to mix up the colour gel to actually glue it together. The leather on that arm is a little bit dry so I'm going to be using some hide food on it which will slightly darken the leather. So I'll aim to mix my repair colour slightly darker than the current colour of the leather. So with a bit of luck it'll blend once I've uh, put the hide food on. And the hide food I use is Connolly hide food, which um, I used to use on leather car seats and I tend to use on anything else nowadays. It may not be the best for the job or anything, but it's the stuff I've got, so that's what I'll be using. And for the initial coats of this um, filler, that are going to be going underneath to glue the patch on. It doesn't really matter if the colour matches or not. I could use virtually anything. But if I do get a little bit onto the front, it's better if I get the colour something like right. So for the first bit of the repair, I'm going to glue just this bottom corner where it's really close to the seam to get that in place because I don't want the backing material creeping away from that seam. So I'll get some adhesive in there and get that bit um, set before I go on to the rest. It's not necessarily the ideal joint. And I shall use the spatula in a minute to get some under here. So, here we go. So I need it properly under there.
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that's probably good in that area. So that'll be that corner. And I'm going to just get a little bit because it will be gluing the edge just in this corner. So I want to or will it? Yeah, it will. Get a little bit onto here. Hope my head isn't in the way, but it probably is. Just going to get a little bit. Just get this corner glued in at the same time. Because that's the really vulnerable bit. And I can wipe off any excess with a bit of rubbing alcohol. Well, in my case, it's just uh, about 70% IPA diluted with water. Right, I'm going to stop the camera now and hold that in place for a few minutes. Once the first part had dried enough to carry on working, I continued along the bottom edge, gluing a little at a time and holding it together until the glue became tacky. If this was a flat repair, I could have potentially done the entire repair in one shot, but in this situation, the padding was pushing the area outwards and would have simply opened up the joint if I'd tried to do any more than small sections. It might have been better to do a stitched repair and then use the filler to disguise the joint and the stitching, but I decided to do it this way, and when I stitch leather it usually results in pain and blood as I stab myself in the fingers with a sharp needle, and no one wants to see that, do they? OK, I've now got the lower section stuck down, but I haven't stuck the flappy bit down. I'm now going to pull a bit of tension into the uh, backing material, because as it is, the foam just keeps wants to popping out of the hole. So I'll pull a bit of tension into the backing material so it's all going to fit right and then I'll actually stick down a bit of this top corner to start that joint and work my way in until I eventually get the point stuck down. So I'll just get a bit in under here. So I'll insert the glue under that corner making sure it spreads a fair way onto the backing. Okay, I'll now again make sure I've got the tension on the backing sheet. Which is good. And then Keep that in place. Sorry if you can't see if my hands are in the way. And one thing I had forgotten earlier is that you can speed up the drying process by using a hairdryer. So that's what I'll do now. Right, I'll shut off the camera at that and wait for it to set fully. As before, I continued along the top edge, doing a section at a time, making sure that I pulled some tension into the backing material before closing each joint. It's worth making sure that you prod the joint downwards to form a trough that you can fill later, rather than leaving a peak that you'd have to attempt to trim off once the glue or filler had set. And finally I stuck the pointy end down and left the whole thing to set thoroughly before proceeding with filling the cracks. The filler or adhesive gets tacky quite quickly once applied. It appears to be some sort of acrylic material rather than a solvent based product and I suspect it probably has a fairly short shelf life. I bought some filler from another supplier in the past that came in little tubs and they all went solid before I got round to using them. Hopefully the coconic stuff will last a bit longer as it's supplied in tubes, but I'd advise that you get it when you need it rather than buying some to keep in stock. 
Okay, that last bit is now set enough for me to start working on filling in another area. So it's just a case of getting some of the filler, which is the same stuff that I've been using all along, down into the crack. Definitely want to make sure it does get down to the bottom of the crack rather than just sitting on the surface. And then smoothing it over with the spatula and then leaving it to set and then reapplying because it will sink back a bit and keep going until it's more or less level and you're happy with it. And then bring out the spatula and smooth it over. Like so. I can actually use a bit of that surplus in a bit more of the crack. After that I carried on applying the filler and smoothing it over until I was happy with the level. I used rubbing alcohol on a cotton bud to blend in some of the hard edges and remove some excess filler, and then left the whole thing to set. Right, that's more or less all the filling done and it's not looking too bad. So the next thing to do is to put some hide food on to see how the colour of the leather comes out. And I may need to do a bit more tinting on the repair. But it's looking quite good so far. So here goes, a little bit of hide food carefully on because the, um, the repair isn't fully cured yet. I should really leave this a couple of days but I'm not going to. So sure put a bit of hide food on let it soak in for a while and see what we end up with so I'll get this whole area covered and then I'll come back and we'll see how it's looking so that's the leather fed and buffed back up again and it's not looking too bad I might next time I'm in the area just come and do a little more colour blending along the join lines just so they match the leather a bit more because the leather colour isn't consistent and the repair tends to be just one colour so if I add some slightly darker and lighter patches it should blend a bit better although to the naked eye it looks much closer than it does on the camera and if we take a look at a before and after shot you get to remember just how bad it was Anyway, for the moment we can call the job done. The leather is repaired and it's not going to tear anymore so the sofa can be used. I think that will do for now. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in a future video.